how COVID-19 outbreak happened. Uh, it, we took it as an opportunity to raise awareness on waste management because while executing the solutions is also important. We thought it is a time to educate people about positive sides, the solutions, the challenges and how can they be addressed and sharing success stories. So, sir, over the last uh, two months, we have conducted a series of webinars where we have touched more than 5,000 people. And uh, we brought together public sector, private sector, people who are innovating, people who are generating awareness, uh, NGOs, regulate, regulatory bodies like CPCB. So everyone joined in. Uh, some good conversations and success stories are presented by municipal corporations. And uh, and then, then, I mean, then we thought that you know now uh, it will be very, very important and meaningful to have a uh, an, a quick chat with you as well because you know the people were filling in feedbacks that you know we would love to hear from uh, the mission director of Swachh Bharat uh, Mission himself and you know I really appreciate and I thank you for agreeing to uh, give us 30 minutes today wherein we'll quickly want to go over and you know hear from you your knowledge your expertise because we have seen uh, you know how you are also on the ground in different cities evaluating what's happening giving recommendations so while you know we were just speaking yesterday it's uh, it's no rocket science. It's all about bringing everything together. Um, so very quickly, sir. Uh, you know, on, we have uh, more than uh, 100 people tuned, tuned in already. So we'll not take time to start. And over the next 30 minutes, there'll be a few questions that I'll uh, put across. And uh, uh, you know, the first one to start with, uh, you know, will be the you know your your experience in the in the as as the as a leader of Swachh Bharat Mission. Overall, you know, what do you think has the progress happened? Yeah. And then later on, we'll get into the role of citizens, RWAs, ULBs, and all of that as well. Yeah. Uh, Ashish, uh, you have been doing a marvelous work in raising the awareness about the Swachh Bharat mission, particularly on the solid waste management. Uh, you know that before 2014, we were uh, not talking about the solid waste at all. Uh, and this was the first time that the prime minister of a country talked on an important day like 15th August, where the foreign policy, economic policy are discussed. He discussed about the Clean India movement. You can't imagine that the country prime minister imagine. And then the journey started. The journey, uh, we should understand where we were well at that time. At that time, only 18% of the solid waste was being processed. Only 18%. At that time, negligible about 30% of the waste being collected from the homes. Segregation was not a talk of the day. And home composting, bulk composting, all these things were unheard. The total capacity of the processing as on that day was only 26,000 ton per day. And we have gone how much, just imagine, from 18% today, the total processing is 65,000. The total waste processing capacity is 26,000 from 26,000 to about 1,8,000 ton per day and about 34,000 ton per day are under construction. The total segregation is, is all called 70 percent. It is either on the source or at the later versus stage. So about 98% waste is being collected from the homes as per the data given by the concerned states. So these are the some data to substantiate what the figure has been done. Now see the results. Results is this, that everybody is talking from or for the solid waste management. You go to the any ULB office, you go to commissioner office, you go to chief minister office, you go to national prime minister office, everybody talks about the solid waste management. Earlier, so this is the label of the awareness. Now you should think 
that earlier we were not calling the safai karmchari to our office and car landing in now this is a normal incident every ulb is doing you have not heard that the informal worker had been called and said yes you are my partner but now it is being done i went to manipur and i recall the day then uh, i met with the, some informal workers and he told they told me sir yahi se mujhe bhagaya diya jata tha hame aise bhagaya jata tha jaise hum untouchable hum is de duniya ke aaj isi कॉन्फ्रेंस रूम में कुर्सी पर बैठे हैं हम हमें खाना दिया जा रहा है उनकी आंखों में उस दिन आंसू थे सो so, आप रिकॉग्निशन इनफॉर्मल वर्कर्स की कितनी हुई है इससे अंदाज लगा सकते हैं यू गो टू मेनी सिटीज इंक्लूडिंग अंबिकापुर वेयर द लेडीज हैव टेकन दिस वर्क हैप्पीली देयर लाइफ हैव चेंज they are running the rickshaw to collect the waste from home to home their husbands are not able to do i have a story of the so many families where their husbands are handicapped and not able to earn and they are earning from this source of the income there are the cases where even the graduates ladies and gents are working collecting the waste from you know the position of the unemployment in india and the big people are currently doing this business this they are collecting the business and not only that you see the no man so many starts up have come up so many business entrepreneurship has been developed and the story does not end here only when i joined this office i went to first time iit guwahati and the first question was asked from to me Why you are making composting when it is being met, generating methane? Methane. I was not a chemistry student, a science student. I did not know why the what is the methane or what is the thing. I asked him what we should do. We should do dump only, even if it is a methane is generating, but it is more beneficial. I don't quite not knowing what are the methane at that time. Then dumping. Then I I told that that. dumping would be much more uh, uh, dangerous i told them but today i can say now the city many cities are not composting they are generating the biogas or bio cng and running the buses the cnd waste which was not even talked on the day i, I only 2 3 years before 4 years before now the cnd waste is being give it a priority and you know that many people, cities are trying that see all the crd waste is utilized in the pavements of footpaths so to you can understand what to what extent my sand of the rivers would be saved to what extent the resources will be able to save now many uh, you have known that now many cities are doing how composting from the flowers and then preparation of the fragrance sticks so so many business are being developed uh, one one city even this cold cloths which are in you know, ujjain in varanasi where these old cloths where we are manufacturing paper from these story so there are countless story being developed i can't uh, count uh, may i have developed a known number of the books on this story and work is ongoing on but i can will not say the story ends here we have given we have run we have crossed only one mile we have to cross several miles before we reach and i want you to understand that many countries of the world took 50 to 70 years to get this type of status we have been able to get this status only in 5 years not take a small step thanks definitely sir and I completely agree there are a lot of entrepreneurial opportunities that people have leveraged and started looking at waste 
not just as waste but as a resource because it actually is a resource if managed correctly <clears throat> and the most important step in ensuring maximum resource recovery is segregation at source we have seen that while awareness has been on the rise we have also seen that people have started segregating at source while there were different kind of challenges cultural challenges educational challenges uh, so but a lot of people across cities again there are so many success stories like you said where people have started segregating at source but uh, in some cases we have seen that either the segregation is not happening or if the segregation happens then during the collection the waste gets mixed up which reminds us of the fact that there are two very important stakeholders in ensuring that this entire process of waste management is sustainable and those two stakeholders are citizens and the ulbs which is the urban local bodies so uh, so sir in terms of waste segregation at source uh, what do you think is the biggest driver for people like we have seen different ways different strategies that ulbs applied in different cities sometimes it worked sometimes it did not what do you think uh, is the best strategy that you heard that worked that they did this and people started segregating at source only ppp PPPP means not public private partnership no first pray aap logo se bada awareness kijiye unhe bataiye ki aapko kaise alag karna hai hai na agar wo us tarah maan jaye is tarah pray karne se jab wo waste picker picker karta hai aur kehta hai ki bhai meri roti is tarah se nikal jayegi तो आधे लोग तो उसी तरह से मान जाते हैं ना लेकिन कोई कहने वाला हो पहले कि कहे तो उनसे कि आप अलग करके मुझे दो अगर कोई भी कहता नहीं है तो नहीं होगा पहली बात इतने सिटीजन खराब नहीं है जितने हम सिटीजन कहते हैं अगर सिटीजन से कहा जाता है तो बहुत से लोग बात मान लेते हैं पहली बात अगर प्रे से बात नहीं मानती तो पर स्वेट दूसरे तरीके होते हैं वहां का कोई बड़ा ऑफिसर आता है या कूड़ा लेने से मना कर दिया जाता है या उससे उसको कर, उसके कलर कलर कोडिंग कर दी जाती है कि तेरा घर लाल दूसरे का घर हरा जहां से अलग होता है तो बहुत से इंसेंटिवाइजेशन के तरीके होते हैं कि आप नहीं उस तरह से हो जाता है इससे करीब 10-15-20 परसेंट लोग और आगे आ जाते हैं फिर भी 15-20 परसेंट तीस परसेंट ऐसे लोग होते हैं जो इन दोनों तरीकों से नहीं मानते तो फिर है पेनालाइज चलान और वट एवर परसेंट यू इफ द यू एल बी परसुएड थ्री एक्शन ओनली देन बी कैन डर सक्सेस इफ only penalize then we will not success only persuasion we will not success or only pray to ramchand ji ne bhi kaha tha bina na malak jala jad gaye teen din beet bole ram sako tab bhavan hoye na preet to teeno tarike zarurat padti hai pehle pray kar lijiye persuade kar liyega aur teesra to karna dono ko hi hai यूएलबी को और उसको और बीच का उनका दोनों का जोड़ने का माध्यम है वेस्ट पिकर वेस्ट पिकर को इसे इंप्लीमेंट करना मैंने जहां पे भी देखा है जहां यूएलबी ने ये डिसाइड कर लिया है जिस तरह भी किया है और जहां भी सफलता मिली है चाहे आप तिरुपति चले जाए चाहे नबी मुंबई चले जाए चाहे सूरत चले जाए चाहे इंदौर चले जाए चाहे अंबिकापुर चले जाए या और कोई शहर चले जाए तीनों में सब जगह पर अगर वो सफलता मिली है तो उन्होंने इन्हीं तीनों तरीके के विभिन्न स्ट्रेटेजीज अपनाई है बट रास्ता तीनों तरह से ही है फर्स्ट प्रे परसुएड एंड देन पैनल अगर तीनों तरीकों में से एक भी तरीका कमजोर होगा तब तक काम नहीं बनता मैं एक एग्जाम्पल देता हूं तो बहुत से सिटी थे अहमदाबाद था मुझे याद है या बहुत बहुत से सिटी है जिन्होंने डिसाइड कर लिया कि कल से हमें करना है फिर उन्होंने पूरी एक स्ट्रेटेजी बनाई अवेयरनेस की पूरी लोगों में प्रोग्राम किए प्रोग्राम करने के बाद 
स्टिकर्स को अपना उन्होंने कहने चाहिए वेस्ट पिकर्स के साथ मीटिंग की रेजिडेंट वेलफेयर एसोसिएशन के साथ मीटिंग की और उसके बाद एक दिन से निश्चय कर लेंगे आज से हम कूड़ा नहीं उठाएंगे और दूसरे दिन से कूड़ा अलग होना चालू हो गया तो मेरा आपसे कहना यह है कि तीनों तरीके अपनाने सर जिस तरीके से आपने एक्सप्लेन किया आई थिंक एनी वन लिस्निंग टू दिस विल नेवर फॉरगेट यू नो द थ्री पीज ऑफ ड्राइविंग बेस्ड सेग्रीगेशन यू नो दिस इज दिस इज यू नो दिस इज आई एम आल्सो एब्जॉर्बिंग दिस रियली वेल बिकॉज जितने भी इनिशिएटिव्स के बारे में हमने सुना है वेदर इट्स ऑन आईईसी या पेनलाइजेशन कम्युनिटी लीडर्स को एंगेज करना रिलीजियस लीडर्स को एंगेज करना अलग अलग चीजें देखी हमने शहरों में लाइक लास्ट ईयर यू नो वी वर डूइंग अ प्रोजेक्ट इन सहारनपुर और वहां पे हमारा मेन काम यही था टू ड्राइव सेग्रीगेशन एट सोर्स बैन सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक एंड ये तीनों स्ट्रेटेजी अप्लाई करनी पड़ी एंड दैट्स द रीजन यू नो देर इज नो सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक इन दैट सिटी एज ऑफ टूडे आई डोंट नो वट हैपन ड्यूरिंग द कोविड पैंडमिक बिकॉज आई हैवन बीन देर बट अंटिल मार्च यू नो दे वर डूइंग रियली रियली वेल एंड अगेन दे डिड दैट बिकॉज देर वॉज कमिटमेंट फ्रॉम द यू एल बी एंड पीपल वर पार्टिसिपेटिंग एंड पीपल वर नॉट जस्ट पार्टिसिपेटिंग दे वॉन्ट यू नो वट आई ऑल्सो बिलीव सर लॉर्ट एंड वी से थिंक ग्लोबल act local in in a waste management scenario i think it's about align yourselves to the swm rules but be local in applying because there could be a lot of local strategies that work based on the demographics of the city uh jo wahan ke local log hain unhe nabs pata hai ki yahan pe hum kya cheeze karenge jo logo ko pasand hai ya kis cheez se log darte hain kis cheez kya cheez log pasand karte hain and accordingly innovatively drive your iec campaigns फॉर एग्जाम्पल सर एक छोटा सा एग्जाम्पल एक और अगेन सेम सिटी सहारनपुर अभी आई एम कोटिंग दैट अलॉट बिकॉज दैट्स अ रिसेंट प्रोजेक्ट वहां पे सहारनपुर इज नोन एज अ सिटी ऑफ क्राफ्टिंग वुड क्राफ्टिंग सो यू नो पीपल आर वेरी मच इन टू डिजाइन दे हैव अ वेरी आर्टिस्टिक माइंड सेट सो दे आर वेन बी कोलेबरेटेड विद कमिश्नर श्री संजय सिंह जी ही सेट लेट्स टू अ पेंट माई सिटी कैंपेन बिकॉज यू नो दैट विल बी द बेस्ट वे टू एंगेज द यूथ So while Paint My City happened in the the Mahakum Mela as well, it is now we are now seeing it across uh, Delhi and CR all the all the parts. But initially it was not very popular. But it is a great way to engage the youth of the city because they they want to see messages made by them for the citizens and they flaunt it. They love it that they have been able to do something for their city at a level of a prominent wall. So every time they pass. they not only get reminded but they show so many people hey when you go to that place have a look at my work and eventually it drives the message of whether it's segregation at source three hours reducing recycling uh, composting at home so so i completely agree with you sir so the three p's will uh, will stay with us now moving on quickly uh, you know to the next uh, query that we have received very frequently all the questions sir i am posing Uh, are based on the feedback and the uh, what people have filled in who are listening to the webinar right now so the question here is sir during the covid 19 outbreak and uh, i know a notification also came out on march 26 uh, from your office which was very detailed out and again you know we don't need to mention i think guidelines and notifications are always very timely but implementation on the ground by the desired authorities takes a back seat at times i remember there was a very important point there about the domestic hazardous waste which is used masks gloves tissue papers jinka quantum has significantly increased since the lockdown uh, began and uh, but in india has i understand a limited infrastructure to uh, you know manage the biomedical or hazardous waste that is a different question uh, the point is when this quantum of waste has increased it needs to be you know stored separately collected separately and then handed over for scientific disposal but we saw you know so many uh, people firstly not even are aware about that they need what they need to do with use masks gloves and all the other safety gear secondly if they are doing their bit but there is no uh, you know proper separate collection happening while i understand that in a regular scenario the percentage of biomedical or hazardous waste in our country is very minimal but during this time when this percentage has increased and will now continue to increase uh, i personally think yes one of the thing is that people need to reduce the most important r in the 3r is reduce we need to reduce the waste as much as possible as well which means that you don't need single use masks you don't need single use gloves you can go for reusable options and good marketing was done by ministry of health to for people to make their cloth masks at home wash it disinfect it and wear it again and again but what do you think sir is the uh, is is the right 
way of you know motivating people or making people aware and then ensuring that this increased quantum of waste does not create any problem in our entire waste management process leading to issues like contamination of the municipal solid waste because of the possible contaminated domestic hazardous waste first thing as you already told we have issued the detailed guidelines on the subject and we are very clear of the opinion there are two issues in the covid-19 wastage one as you have told masks or gloves which are used by the persons and we have told that they are to be treated as a domestic hazardous waste and may be given after wrapping to the person who is collecting separately which can be taken as per rules but unfortunately in india uh, hazardous waste has not been taken care of till date and that's why this world the hazardous even you are well aware this uh, sanitary napkins and all these things are also not taken care of and they are mixed with the other dry waste or bad waste whatever the things are there but our rules is very clear that not only rules we have issued the guidelines and many cities i will say many cities have followed those those guidelines and treated those guidelines as hazardous waste the second issue which is important for me is not only that part my important issue was also that that waste from the quarantine house if a waste house has been declared as a quarantine then the all the waste from that house becomes hazardous and a biomedical waste because you can't say ki which waste has been food has been taken by the patient which patient has been taken by other which close a suspected close contacts and even if they were not proved to be uh, uh, covid 19 patient they can they are probable cases so we have told that this all the waste from such houses because the patient is being kept there right, should be taken as a biomedical waste as it is just the, the house is nothing as a ward it is a single unit ward and the uh, patient uh, if a quarantine center it is a multi unit ward that's the only difference but it is the ward and all the waste should be treated as a contaminated and should be dealt with accordingly if you have the incinerators if you have the facilities go for that facility if you don't have then we have also to go for the burial procedures so that part is there uh, many cities have followed and we are very clear of the opinion that the life nothing can be important than the life so if the all the cities have to follow those guidelines and they are supposed but there are certain differences ministry of environment and forest climate change have issued a different guideline so there is some confusion but maximum number of the cities are following ministry of housing and urban affairs guidelines whether you take the indore whether you take the amdavad whether you take or other city they are taking the same guidelines and treating the waste from the quarantine house as a biomedical is because that is much more important and making awareness about the uh, gloves and the uh, can it be masks it is not very popular at the moment let us uh, i should admit that part is still not popular but i will say even if we are able to concentrate on the quarantine houses way we can save a lot of sanitary workers to that extent definitely sir but i think uh, for quarantine homes you know it, it is they don't have any option then to use for, go for the single use pps gloves or masks and uh, but for 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 common public which is uh, just following the lockdown protocols or you know staying at home or following the business as usual uh, they don't need to go for single use material because then they are overall creating undesired load on our waste management infrastructure which is limited 
in terms of biomedical waste as of today, which we understand. And even if it was not limited, I think we always advocate and educate people to reduce the amount of waste being produced. Now, sir, and, and I think you would agree, India has a great history of not being creating a lot of waste. Most of the waste that we even create as of today is the wet waste or the organic waste. When this is compared to the global numbers, and even if I look, I was just reading a study earlier this week uh, from Bloomberg Green, wherein they cal calculated the per capita waste generation in every country. And I was surprised Singapore was the highest. <laughs> and in the top 20, India was not even featuring in the list. So people messaged me and said, hey, why this? Uh, why India is not on the list? Did they miss India? Like they didn't miss India. India's per capita generation of waste is one of the lowest in the world still, because we have very recently transitioned to that economy of consuming a lot of single use items you know because and which is which is good so i think that's why i tell people a lot of times that the solution to a lot of problems does not lie in the west but it does it lies in your past so if even if we can remind ourselves of a lot of activities composting at home used to be something that we have a lot of us have seen our uh, parents grandparents following there used to be a, a garden at home which was maintained and you know compost used to be a, a natural addition and which used to be generated at home so i think it's just that uh, with rapid urbanization a lot of things were forgotten but good that that reminder is coming in at the right time uh, like you said people are also creating entrepreneurial opportunities and we have seen again success stories i've seen so many biomethanation plants uh, in states like delhi uh, Bangalore, Pune, and you know, they have created a good economy because they are able to create valuable products. So while they create compost, they also create biogas or at times they convert biogas to electricity. In a case I saw they converted it into electricity and giving it back to the grid like they did in case of uh, solar panels. So innovations will continue to happen. India is known for innovations, but I think it's all about igniting that change which has already been ignited. And like we were discussing yesterday, I think we are right now in phase one. Uh, this 1.0, if can be successful, the 1.0 of waste management, there is so much to do in 2.0 and uh, the versions ahead, but we have to get our basics right. I think 1.0 is very important that way, and in the years to come, there is so much hope. And the, and the fact of the matter, this gets proven, is that so many people, <clears throat> both uh, private sector, NGOs, individuals, entrepreneurs, are getting into this field. You see new ventures coming up because they are realizing the potential of you know looking at waste like a resource and for that everyone's ask is one waste segregation at source because none of those businesses will thrive if segregation does not happen at source um, with that sir i'll take up a you know concluding couple of questions because we are already past 30 minutes um, and and this is something that we have discussed in the past as well and very interesting question so sir what happens we have seen in cities is uh, and I'm talking about urban uh, India, wherein we have these high high rise societies, gated societies, RWAs. Uh, they are ideally a bulk generator. And uh, even I think as per the definition of the rules, they will be considered as a bulk generator because they're generating more than 100 kgs a day as a, as a unit, as a complex. Now, we have seen in majority of the cases that waste is being handed over to the ULB, uh, the contractor that ULB has hired. So first difficult thing to understand is why is you will be instead of penalizing the bulk generator, which is a high high rise society or a mall or a complex, anyone, they're ending up collecting it. They collect this waste and then the contractor does what he needs to do with that. The point is they need to deploy decentralized solutions. And I think, uh, and I would love to hear your thoughts that that cannot happen without two things. One is, Aware, making the residents aware, obviously, uh, the, the RWA, the Resident Welfare Association or Apartment Owners Association and the ULB. The ULB has to maybe first give just a notification, like you said, inform them, pray, pursue. But then eventually, if the penalization does not happen, uh, we have been hearing about it. You know, I uh, right now I am here in Noida and here we see that the talks have been on for years but uh, the solution is not happening because eventually the problem is not falling on their face they they are giving away the the day they stop collecting the wet waste i think the, the sense of urgency to deploy this decentralized solutions will go to the next level so would love to hear your thoughts on that briefly sir 
Now, first, I, I am completely agree that the, all these high-rise buildings are the bulk generators and they should do. But uh, I, I, I will not say that all the cities are not doing. You may not be no, no, maybe knowing the Mumbai. Mumbai banned the people the, that they will not collect the waste from the society, multi-rise society. And on that day, other day, the multi-rise society started to process their waste in their whole uh, society itself. So the solution is rising that yes, they have to do um, processing this. In go to Navi Mumbai, I have not found even a single society where waste plant is not established in the Navi Mumbai. They don't collect the waste from a Navi Mumbai. You go to Bangalore also, Bangalore also there are so many societies where this waste is not being collected. In government colony in Delhi also, we have started that the waste is collected and processed in the same society, uh, wet waste, and the dry waste is bifurcated and given to the um, other persons. So, uh, process is started uh, in many society. Yes, it has to be caught up, caught up, catch up, and it has not been catch up as it should have been. But once the process light of ray is there, and everybody is trying, there are certain um, ULB which have got a first uh, runner up, first uh, got a success. There are certain runner up, and we feel that in the time to come, all these uh, ULB will be able to impose on the bulk generators that they should manage their waste either themselves or through private persons uh, employed on commercial terms. My, I really say those because I, I, we will not touch. Either you touch, you manage, or some other entrepreneur manage on your behalf. We will not touch. So this is the our conditions, and this is the uh, our uh, one of the criteria in first surveyor in um, garbage free city certification that all the bulk waste generators should waste uh, process their waste themselves or through. Uh, they are uh, commercial persons. Um, uh, they, for example, Bangalore has also put up a um, uh, can I say a board, board uh, which are the processors which can pick up your waste. So society can choose any one of them and uh, can get the waste processed. Yes, sir. I'm aware. You know, they have panelled a few uh, companies who can who deal in decentralized solutions. And uh, one very important thing you you highlighted this point of how the parameters of Swat Sarvekshan or garbage free cities ratings, you know, they include these things. And I think that's what pushes the ULBs that motivates the ULBs because everyone is wanting to perform and get a good rating. Uh, and I just noticed, I think just within uh, one month ago, when uh, Sri Hardeep Singh Puriji and you launched the GFC rating, uh, and I, I, when we saw the cities that got five rating, it was, you know, it felt obvious that yes, you know, these it evident hai in cities mein ki yahan kaam hua hai, yahan aapko kude ke dher nahi milenge, and here people are ensuring that they are managing their waste themselves, they are taking responsibility of it. Then I looked at the ratings at one. I scrolled down the list and I saw who are the cities in one, and that was also very obvious because these are the same cities who have not taken steps. So I think that current that you know the efforts taken or adherence to the uh, you know solid waste management rules or the guidelines of Swachh Bharat Mission directly proportional to you know any of these evaluations or surveys that uh, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs conducts. So I think, uh, but you know that also brings me to an important question, sir. And this is an observation more from a neutral NGO standpoint. We have seen that, uh, you know, when the Swatch Sarvekshan is about to happen, so I know it's a quarterly exercise now and then the annual rating comes up. Uh, a lot of work starts happening, things get expedited. Uh, you know, you see, you, started, you start seeing cleaner toilets, no piles of waste, critical, there is a lot of critical behavior from ULBs that they handle requests very quickly, whether it's on Twitter or whether it's in the helpline. When the you know they move away from that evaluation period and again that's not talking specifically about a ulb this is a generic converse, uh, observation 
do you think and this is also idea coming from a lot of people uh, and from me as well personally sir that should there be a should there be neutral bodies uh, reporting directly into uh, sbm or ministry of housing uh, which gives constant feedback and neutral feedback in, without influenced by anyone in the process and that's why i'm saying reports directly uh, to your department and this way an honest picture comes out and yes you know those notifications are going out regularly to fix those things from you to the ulbs instead of just the swast sarvekshan happens and then they try to get their acts in order very good suggestion but i will say two things first thing ki aap jo keh rahe hain last mein hota hai aapne kaun si class padhi hai 10 12th graduation whatever the you examination you have passed aap apne dil se bataye आपने नहीं जब एनुअल एग्जाम हुआ होगा तभी पढ़ाई करने चाहता है की होगी साल भर कोई बहुत कम लोग पढ़ पाते हैं है ना क्वार्टरली पाते एग्जाम के से पहले छह महीने दो महीने एक महीने पहले जितनी पढ़ाई आप चौबीस घंटे करते हो उतनी पूरे साल भर नहीं करते तो ये बिल्कुल कम्प्लीटली प्रोसेस है कि वो उस उसी तरह से करते हैं और उसमें मार्क्स लाने के लिए काम करते हैं लेकिन हमने उसको जैसे आपको मालूम है पहले मेरे छोटे जब मैं छोटा था तब एनुअल एग्जाम होते थे लेकिन जब मैं एट्थ नाइन्थ में आया तब यानी सरकार ने क्वार्टरली एग्जाम मंथली टेस्ट करने की फैसला किया हमने भी पिछले साल से क्वार्टरली टेस्ट करने की रैंकिंग की बात करी और उसमें यानी लोगों को नंबर देने की बात की तो एक तो हमने ये चेंज किया कि कंटिन्यूस काम हो दूसरी बात सिटीजन का इन्वॉल्वमेंट करने के लिए उस क्वार्टरली में स्वच्छता सर्वे स्वच्छता ऐप पर जितनी आपकी शिकायतें हैं वो लगातार उनके स्टैंडर्ड्स आपने एसएलसी में किस नंबर में किस में कहा किए उस सबको हमने कंसीडर किया तीसरा हमने अभी एक और साइट डोप करने जा रहे हैं जिसमें भी डंपिंग ग्राउंड है उनकी फोटो अगर चार आदमी डाल देते हैं और वो नहीं होता तो उसको हम डंपिंग ग्राउंड मान लेंगे आप सिटी कहे या ना कहे उसे डंपिंग ग्राउंड मानेंगे फिर वो कितने दूर में हुआ इस तरह का एक सिस्टम लाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं ताकि हम उसकी शिकायत न ले सकें ऐसे ही हमने स्वच्छता ऐप पर या गूगल मैप पर आपने सारी पब्लिक टॉयलेट्स डाली और उन पे सिटीज से कहा सिटीजन से कहा कि गूगल ने हमें सहायता की कि आप उनकी रेटिंग करेंगे वो टॉयलेट गंदी थी बढ़िया थी और कैसी थी हमने एक और भी एक काम किया कि सारी टॉयलेट की रेटिंग करवाई कि वो ओडी एप वो ओडी उसमें वन स्टार है टू स्टार है थ्री स्टार है उसका उसका क्लीन वेरी गुड और उसको और उस हिसाब से वो टॉयलेट इतनी साफ हुई शहरों में जिस जो जिन टॉयलेट को कभी किसी ने देखा तक नहीं था आज वो टॉयलेट चमकने लगी उनके बारे में आज आज ही आज ही मुझे इनक्रेडिबल इंडिया की तरफ से कहा गया कि उन टॉयलेट की लोकेशन हमारे वेब पे भी डलवा दें इतना मतलब उसकी वैल्यू बढ़ रही है सो so, हम अब एक स्वच्छ नगर ऐप लेकर आने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं जिसमें सारे के सारे कलेक्शन और प्रोसेसिंग और ट्रांसपोर्टेशन हमारे पास रिकॉर्ड हो पूरे जितनी क्वार्टरली टेस्ट हैं उनमें भी हम सारे सिटीजन से क्वेश्चन पूछते हैं कि आपके वार्ड में हो रहा है या नहीं हो रहा या जो उसने क्लेम किया वो वास्तव में वो सिटीजन से नहीं हुआ तो इस समय इतने वो जो पार्टीज हैं चाहे वो ओडीएफ के लिए हो या गार्बेज फ्री के लिए हो या सर्वेक्षण के लिए हो वो भी बिल्कुल इंडिपेंडेंट होती हैं हमारा उनके ऊपर कोई कंट्रोल नहीं होता वो इंडिपेंडेंट तरीके से काम करते हैं पैसा जरूर हम देते हैं लेकिन करती वो इतनी इंडिपेंडेंट तरीके से सो so, आप ऑलरेडी सिटीजन uh, का इन्वॉल्वमेंट है इंडिपेंडेंट पार्टी का इन्वॉल्वमेंट है और हमारा कोई डायरेक्ट अभी हम समझते हैं कि ये इतने ऑलरेडी चेकिंग एंड चेक एंड बैलेंस सिटीजन के ऊपर आ चुके हैं इसी कारण अब हर सिटी बिना काम किए हुए रैंकिंग नहीं पास ये आपने देख लिया आप ये भी कह रहे हैं कि आपने उन चीज को जो सर्टिफिकेशन की जो रैंकिंग आई है आपने देखी और आपने महसूस किया कि ये जो सिटी अगर फाइव स्टार है तो वास्तव में वो फाइव स्टार के लाख थे जो थ्री स्टार है वो वास्तव में थ्री स्टार के लाइक थे तो ग्राउंड और सर्टिफिकेशन दोनों मैच करने लगा है ये ग्राउंड और सर्टिफिकेशन मैच करने लगा है तो मुझे लगता है कि हम और ऐसे कुछ प्रयत्न करेंगे जिससे 
सिटीजन को और सिटी को फाइनेंशियल एड जो मिलती है वो उस रैंकिंग पर आधारित होगी ये कुछ नए प्रोविजन आने वाले हैं उससे साइड इसका सिटीजन और उस वो जो यूएलपी है उस पर काम करने के लिए इंसेंटिवाइज हो That's a very good idea, sir. In fact, uh, just a few days ago, we were discussing that this rating comes. If it has a direct impact, you know, in form of some penalty or incentivization, we always say carrot or stick. Hoga, so everyone's job will become easier. You know, cities would want to have more budgets on their side, uh, which they can utilize for the upliftment of the infrastructure. So I think, sir, that those are some really good ideas. Some of these initiatives that you just mentioned. uh they're enlightening for me as well as our organization and all the 200 plus people who are watching it right now so thank you for sharing that and i think uh, the way uh, so again awareness on swachhata app also has increased a lot but uh, i i believe you know the, the general public needs constant reminders we see that uh, you know the social media of swachh bharat mission also continues to talk about it i also know that the swachhata app was enhanced and uh, some enhancements were made specifically for covid uh and then because i'm i'm a big fan of it uh, you know of that app because it gives the the power the, the power in the hands of the citizens and that's how it should always be for uh, you know essential services because no one gives feedback better than them so that's a great initiative sir and i'm really looking forward to the the swachh nagar app as well because i think if all that data becomes visible at uh, the ministry level then things will people people and authorities will become more accountable and transparent in what they are uh, trying to achieve one uh, i think sir one final uh, question that we can take because it's uh, we already beyond time i uh, firstly again uh, you know thank you so much for giving us this valuable time because hearing it from you directly uh, gives so much clarity uh, maybe we have not been able to take all the questions but you know it has initiated a good thought process among a lot of us uh these you know we have a mix of entrepreneurs like you said a lot of private limiteds uh ngos students who uh, you know uh, people from iit uh, csir neeri everyone who's wanting to learn and you know stay updated uh, while we continue to take a lot of efforts on our side with green dream foundation and smart cities india expo uh you know i know when we met last year at the expo uh, during a panel discussion uh, your entire focus was always on waste segregation and you know being able to drive that uh, so during that one year we did a lot of work achieved some success stories and you know a lot of people ask us what keeps you motivated because you know when you're working in the waste management sector or anything to do with environment it's easy to get bogged down but it's also very very easy to stay motivated by achieving results so these you know this this data around us which creates a lot of positivity and a lot of innovation happening so many uh, private players entering the market which solves the problem of uh, funds so many uh, you know educated people entering the market which solves the problem of taking uh, irrational decisions so all of that is getting addressed and with the government's focus i think uh, th there is always going to be just an upside to it waste management as a sector in any scenario uh, is going to be on the upside uh, you know on all the triple on all the factors of the triple bottom line whether it's social development whether economic development or environmental upgradation all of them uh, will be driven if waste management is taken seriously in our country so sir with that uh, i would request you to just give a concluding remark on what do you think uh, you know all these people who have joined in what are those two things or three things that they can do uh, at their level to bring the change as the citizens of the country or even if they are uh, technology makers solution makers private limiteds what are those two or three basic things that are the way forward from let's say next 12 months standpoint because you have the complete vision and uh, you know if these guys are getting on the same path of that vision i think everyone's job will become very easy uh, i i am very clear all things are possible as you have already told only the three principles of uh, segregation 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 there is no other principle and that can be done either at the home you can the principle you can process that waste at the other side you can bring then mrf you can establish a automated mrf can be established or bring a resource recovery you can bring a, a, a number of ways to fuel biomethanization composting waste to energy or 
flower or or you can establish decentralized composting or decentralized biomimesis and anything you can establish but then you have to ensure that your citizens your friends or from the sources wherever you are receiving the waste is segregated and for that purpose you have to put a value on that part having said that so all our directions should be held only to that extent second we should understand also that some that it is if you even if you are throwing it is our money we are throwing if we are throwing our money in the sense that the processing cost will increase tremendously example for example i say i have been working on the legacy waste management nowadays and the total cost comes about rupees 1.51 per, per kg so i have told i have been discussing that why not put a tax or a landfill user charges say 1 rupees 550 paisa per kg so that at least one person can have to pay a some charges if we can drive a value in a throwing of the waste i am sure that so many entrepreneurship so many new things new ideas will come out automatically we have not to develop so that minimum waste goes to landfill and our environment whether it is underground water whether it is air or whether the landfill pollen becomes less polluted thanks thank you so much sir i think uh, to sum it up yes zero waste to landfill has to be the vision and this uh, this idea that you exploring for uh, you know putting some kind of a cess or charge on uh, disposing of the waste in landfills will definitely open up new opportunities uh, some cities have already started the processes of bioremediation but a lot of cities are yet to do it so i think this will kind of move them uh, as well but uh, you know with this i will uh, take your leave and add again thank you so much sir and like you say swach namaskar uh, you know it's always a pleasure to hear from you and uh, we will continue to stay connected and you know thank you so much for sharing all those insights which would have not been possible to uh, anyone to learn within just a span of 45 minutes so thank you so much sir for this valuable session and being with us today thank you thank you sir.